This is Monday's lesson 12.1, um, our guided notes. So have your handout with you and fill out, and um, then at the end of the period, you'll have time to work on your homework. So first of all, before we can talk about what cross-sections of solids are, we actually have to have our lesson on solids themselves. So what do we mean by a solid figure? A solid figure is a three-dimensional figure bounded by either flat or curved surfaces. And those that they're bounded, which means they enclose something. So they enclose a single region of space. The, when we say this, a single region of space, we're really basically saying there's going to be some volume. So over here is a um, diagram of one type of solid. And what type of solid is this? There's, there's very specific types of solids. And um, the one we're going to concentrate on right now are polyhedron. And what makes it a polyhedron? Well, a polyhedron is when those that solid that's been bounded by these surfaces, all of the surfaces are polygons. There can't be any curves you know, on the surface. So if you look over here at this um, figure, everything is made by straight lines. And we have a trapezoid and we have a parallelogram. We have a rectangle and, um, you know, we've, we've got all polygons here. So this right here is a polyhedron. It's made up of three different things, faces, edges, and vertices. And first of all, let's talk about faces. Well, faces are the flat surfaces. So right here, this trapezoid is a face. And this here, this um, poly, um, parallelogram is a face. And this one up on the top is a face. All of these are faces. But there are two different categories of faces I want us to talk about also. And those polygons can be either bases or lateral faces. So they're all they're all faces. Bases and lateral faces are faces. But some of the faces are bases and some of the faces are lateral faces. The bases in this particular one happen to be the two trapezoids. Those are the bases because they are congruent and parallel polygons, and so those are, we will refer to as the bases. And I know that's like, well, it's not sitting on here. So isn't this the base, this bottom? So no, remember, there's no bottom in, in geometry. It, it has to do with our definition. And in this case, we've got two congruent and parallel polygons, and so we're going to refer to those as our bases, which means the other faces, which there are four of that goes all the way around, this one here, this one here, the one on the other side here, and the one underneath, those are all lateral faces. And those lateral faces are what connects the two bases. The edges are segments that connect two faces. So it's where two faces uh, meet. So this right here is a an edge. And over here is an edge. I'm going to highlight some in pink. This is an edge right here. And these are also edges. So I've got all basically the lines you draw to create your polyhedron are the edges. The vertices are where three, and it has to be three or more. It could be four or five. It could be more. Sometimes we have interesting um, polyhedron that have lots of uh, um, edges that meet, but it has to be at least three. Not two, but three. When two faces meet, you get an edge. When three edges or more meet, you get a vertex. So this right here where these, these meet is a vertex. So if I put a, um, whoops, sorry, if I put it dot right there. That's a vertex right there. We've got a vertex over there. We've got vertices. You know, each one of the, the other way we think is the corners. Now they're not called corners, they're called vertices, but that's the vertices. All right, so our key idea here is there's different kinds of solid figures. There's some that are polyhedron and there's some that are not. The ones that are polyhedron have flat surfaces. So you can see this, which is called a prism, has all flat surfaces. This thing, what's called a pyramid, has all flat surfaces. These three have curves. They are not polyhedron. Now, the plural of polyhedron is polyhedra. It You can say, although it's not as often, you can say polyhedrons. It is more common to say polyhedra. So these two are polyhedra, so that's plural, and these three are not. All right. In these polyhedra, going back to this idea of bases and lateral faces, this polyhedron, right, this prism, happens to have this rectangular base. And I, 
I, there's a lot of different faces I could have called the base for that, but I just decided to call that the base. In the pyramid, right here we have the base, okay? And that's going to come into play with the next thing we're going to talk about, which is how do we determine the difference between a prism and a pyramid? Well, I think when we look at it, we can, you know, maybe you think of, well, this look to me is what I think of when I think of a pyramid, but we have to have the geometric definition of it. So a prism is when you have two congruent and parallel polygon bases. So over here we have this prism and we see that it has two pentagons one there and one at the top and that means that this right here those are the bases all of the lateral faces the things that connect the two bases must be parallelograms and so if you look at them and that's why these pentagons cannot be called lateral faces because they're not parallelograms they're pentagons um so all of the other uh, faces that connect them must be parallelograms. In a pyramid, we have one base and only one base, not two, but one base. And all of our lateral faces are triangles. The triangles, they all meet down at the bottom, at the, well, they meet at the base, and they also, all the lateral faces meet at one vertex, which is called the apex. Each of these, a pyramid or a prism, whether it's a prism or a pyramid, they're named by the type of polygon base they have. So up here, remember it says right up here, it says pentagonal prism. That's because both the bases are pentagons. And over here, we had a base that was a triangle, so that's why this is called a triangular pyramid. So in these two problems, do we see any... Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Do we see any um, polyhedron? Whoops, sorry about that. Any polyhedron. And we say, well, the first one, yeah, it's got all polygons, so therefore it's a polyhedron. That's the first thing you're looking for. Is it a polyhedron? Then I'm saying, well, of the polyhedrons that we have studied so far, we've only studied two of them, one of them being a prism, one of them being a pyramid. Which one is this, if it is one of them? And we say, oh, I see it has two bases, it's these two triangles. We cannot call those lateral faces. They must be the bases because those are not parallelograms. And all of the lateral faces are parallelograms, so this is a prism. The bases are triangles, so it is a triangular prism. And then, of course, in this one over here, we've got curved surfaces, so it's not a polyhedron. It is called a cylinder. Cross-sections. Now is the title of our lesson, which is cross-sections of solids. We have right here just some examples to look at. We have solids uh, on all three of these are cubes. So I mean all six faces are exactly the same um, squares. Okay, so they're cubes. And each one of these has been intersected by a a plane, and that's what makes a cross section. You have a plane that slices through some three dimensional object, and we're going to talk about the shape that is created. Okay, the shape that it's created is what we call the cross section itself. So, in this first one, we had a square, and we have this um, um, plane that is parallel to the base, and we ended up with a square cross section. This one, it, they angled the um, plane. In fact, it looks like to be parallel to the edges. And what we ended up with was a rectangle. The cross section is a rectangle. It's really hard to see this. You'd have to really look carefully at your picture. But this cuts off a little corner of the cube. When the corner of the cube has been cut off, what's the flat surface that it looks like? Remember, it's going to be a flat surface for the cross section because it's on the plane, which is flat. And that, sec that is a triangle. It's a tiny little triangle. Not the whole tip, because the tip came off, but what was left was a little triangle. All right, so here's some more examples. We're going to look at cross-sections in here. Cross-sections, and be careful, because here it says it just has to be a solid. It does not have to be a uh, polyhedra. It, so this is a cylinder, and we can have a cross-section of a cylinder. When we have a cross-section of a cylinder... Right there, we ended up, because it is parallel to the bases, 
then its cross section is also a circle. If this were angled, kind of like this middle one is showing here, this wouldn't be a circle. It would be like a stretched out circle, which is called an ellipse. Over here, we have a rectangular prism. And that rectangular prism has been sliced by a plane that is parallel to the bases. So therefore, its slice, its cross section, will look just like one of the bases, which is a um, rectangle. Okay. Got six more examples of what we've been studying. So so far, the idea is: are they pair? Are they um, polygon? A, a polyhedron? And if they are polyhedron, what's their name? So this looking at problem number one, we've got two congruent and parallel polyhedron um, and polygons, which are pentagons. So therefore, that is a pentagonal prism. This one here, well, we've got a round shape. You can see here, this base is round. We don't have a name for this. Um, it is a composite, meaning I see two types of solids kind of shoved together to make one solid. So there's not one name for this solid. The main thing is it's just not a polyhedron. Okay. And then this last one on um, for naming it, and is it a polyhedron? This one has just one base, and it is challenging sometimes to, to, to count the sides carefully of this base, of this um, polygon, and you'll notice that it has eight sides. Since it has eight sides, it's an octagon, and so this is an octagonal pyramid. And it's a pyramid because it only has one base, and all of the lateral faces meet at one point. We have cross-sections. Cross-section of a sphere is always going to be a circle. No matter how you angle the plane, you're always going to get a circle. Depending on where you slice it, the circle could get smaller or larger with the largest one going through the center of the circle. So this one cut it into two halves of a circle, meaning it cut, it's a hemisphere. Um, but we just say circle. This right here is a cone, and the uh, plane sliced a piece of the cone right off, went right through the vertex down to the base, and we ended up with a triangle. And here it looks like we have, it looks like it'd be another cube. Uh, it could be a rectangular prism, but the main thing is when it's sliced through, what we got there was a rectangle. All right, so you have homework. Um, you, you should have gotten the stamp sheet for this new chapter. Your homework is in 12.1 in the textbook, so you should work on that for the rest of the period.